it's a book about changing the world, uh, in fact, changing the world through art, theology and philosophy. It's a book about theopolitical activism. I know it's crazy pretentious, but uh, well, just look at the world. I don't think we have time for shyness nor vanity. If you've found your way here, I'm sure you're familiar with Carl Schmitt's political theology and the idea that all key concepts of modern theory of the states are secularized uh, theological concepts. So that in political theory, the sovereign has a role similar to the, the role of God in theology, that is the one that has all the power. But what really is God's role in theology or what could God's role in theology be? In an aim to reverse Schmidt's idea of God as the almighty sovereign, Jeff Robbins lets the notion of democracy pave the way for a renewed account of theology. For Robbins, theopolitical resistance is not legitimized through faith in a God beyond the oppressive powers of this world. Instead, the very notion of a divine authority is transformed through the notion of democracy, so that sovereignty itself becomes inseparable from the multiplicity of the world, the many voices, the needs and desires of this world. Robbins suggests a political theology that understands the sovereign as the multitude rather than the one. And I mentioned Robin's idea because it is similar to what I explore in Foucault Art and Radical Theology, The Mystery of Things, which is a book on Foucault's reflections on art with a view to the theological and political openings that they offer. It's a book where I highlight the performative and material aspects of Foucault's writings and I reformulate them in terms of what I call the mystery of things. The mystery of things is quite simply the Foucauldian notion of reality as a surface of appearance or as discourse brought into theology. That is Foucault's uh, attempt to let the world stand forth in its complexity, mysteriousness and richness without a god or a subject to explain it all. That idea to let the surface of knowledge stand forth just as it is, as a mishmash of uh, misunderstandings and truth attempts of thingies and ideas and bodies, plants, organisms, is brought into theology as a lens through which to view theology, faith, religious pr practice and theopolitical activism. By writing on paintings, Foucault finds a way to focus on the thingness, not only of art, but of words, things and thought. So, for instance, in relation to Manet, Foucault shows how the very flatness of the canvas questions our ability to know, because it questions our ability to ever represent the depth and complexity of reality. But his writings on art consist of uh, essays written throughout his academic career, why they also indicate his development as a thinker. So in his later work, the surface of appearances, the mysteriousness of things, words, actions, all this turns political. In politics is not just ideas and formal regulations, but also things, images, gestures. And that means that imagery, broadly understood, can be used to change the world. It can change the way the world appears and thus change the world as we know it. After his uh, political awakening in 1970, Foucault writes on French artist Gerard Fromanger, in his paintings, Fromanger plays with photography often images circulating in news media, daily newspapers. And Foucault saw this way, uh, this way of playing with images as a way to reclaim them from advertisement and the truth telling of news media. Not in order to define the images and say what they are really all about, but on the contrary, to complicate them, 
like an image of the prison revolts in France, for instance, an image that was in every newspaper at the time. What actually happens in an image like this? And what do we see? What faces, what reactions, what experiences, and what do we not see in those photos that are supposed to reveal the truth about an event, how it really was? To Foucault, to approach the world as it appears was an epistemological move. It was a method that enabled a new way to approach history and the political reality of his time. When reality is viewed as a surface, expressions of reality that may otherwise fall out of sight may stand forth. When viewing reality as that which stand forth, leaving behind uh, our ideas of how things should be, we may start noting different expressions of reality. And when used as a theological approach, this means, for instance, that rather than to spend time on metaphysical or dogmatic debates on what is true, we may simply note that each repetition of Christian dogma, narrative, liturgy, not to mention Bible quotes in political speeches or preachers blaming certain groups of people for a pandemic, are real, actual, present and affecting our world, our politics, our bodies and minds, and thus constantly building and rebuilding reality as we know it. To say, for instance, that those who blame the LGBTQ plus community for the pandemic are wrong, that they misinterpreted the Bible, well, even though it's probably true, it's not necessarily efficient in today's social media logic because that can always be countered with another interpretation. The theological and political resistance that I encountered in artistic contributions while working on this book was different. It did not support itself on a truer interpretation of reality, but on the possibility of changing reality as it appears. So the authority of the resistance was not dependent upon heavy theoretical reasoning, but instead found its force in nonsensical playfulness, performativity and materiality. In other words, I realized that changing reality is not always about outsmarting, but at times about outsillying or concilying, doing silly things together, like the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, Pussy Riot or the artists before them that inspired their actions. The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence is a queer nun order that was founded when they celebrated Mass on Easter Sunday 1978 with wine and condoms. The Sisters turned what they experienced as the very essence of oppression, namely the Catholic Church, its rituals and dress codes, into a birthplace for their own liberation. They created new images, a new surface of knowledge, by playing with the expressions of their own bodies by placing their transgender identities in the midst of Christian liturgy and imagery. In doing so, I find that they depicted the transformative force of Christian imagery. With the development of this movement as an example, we may note how Christian imagery itself takes part in transforming one little piece of reality. The dissident order of Nuns and the images it broadcasts take part in changing the image not only of the LGBTQ plus community, but also Christianity. Christianity may, in other words, be changed from within its very imagery. Christians, Christian expressions are to some extent beyond our control. They are part of the mystery of things. In this theopolitical surface approach, the world, understood as a mystery of things, can incite marvel, even awe, and it can encourage action. Creative, activist additions to the surface of appearance to oppose every oppressive attempt at deterring the expressions of the world. 
from the pre-1970s Foucault, that is before his political awakening, we bring the marvels, the humility and the fascination with the surface of appearances, acknowledging our life among things, organisms, words and thoughts, where reality is constantly changed and constantly reborn born and where we never know for sure. From the post-1970 Foucault, after his political awakening, we bring the actions, the activism motivated by the appreciation of the possibility to take part in creatively transforming the surface. There is certainly an apophatic gesture in Foucault's thinking, since he explores what reality looks like if we don't expect that there is something that is how, it's re how it really is or should be. He explores reality without presupposing a divine or human subject. And still I find that the Foucauldian mystery of things may add a dimension to the negative uh, theology tradition of thought. In the apophatic or negative theology, there is a kind of removal, a subtractive gesture, a negative gesture that points to the borders of our knowledge and that opens our respect and humility. Through Foucault's encounters with art, I encountered an approach that I found was additive rather than subtractive. A theology of the mystery of things is performative, and not about withdrawing from the representations of the world, but about adding to them. To throw light on the complexity and multiplicity of re reality. Foucault's political turn is a return to representation, but with a twist. It's about acknowledging that we do know, or we think we know, we do represent, we do categorize, we do label the world, each other and God. We judge and measure each other based on notions of origin and inner truth, whether we intend to or not. When we see an image of a pipe, we do not hesitate to state that is a pipe. And when the inflow of immigrants started draining the assets of the European welfare states, even the most open countries began to scrutinize origin, identity and truth at the borders. Who are you? Where did you come from? Why are you here? And in a few decades, we may expect hundreds of millions of climate re refugees making the neoliberal ideals of an open international flow of labor and goods once again reveal their opaque side of fixed representational ideas regarding what is what, who is in and who is out. The additive response is not to withdraw from the flow of images and ideas, but to add to them. Not to state what is finally true, true, neither in church nor at the borders, but in order to complicate. The additive response talks back, adding truths. Who are you? Where did you come from? Why are you here? Or add images of, say, a nun, a nun with a beard. Well, why not? Or adding images of Russian Orthodox believers. What is Russian Orthodox liturgy and faith and what can it look like? As one final example, let me turn to one more concrete example. An action in the Cathedral of Christ the Saviour in Moscow. According to Dmitry Oslaner, it did in fact change the appearance of the post-secular in Russia. It's true that the Putin regime's close alliance with the Orthodox Church is one expression of a post-secular development in Russia, in the sense that it is no longer vital for the regime to show its independence from the Church, as it used to be. But the Pussy Riot case generated more images of the post-secular. At the very least, the punk groups claim for the right to pray politically, to be activists, believers and women at once, express the presence of another version of post-secularism post alongside the alliance between the church patriarch and state president. The new imagery spread across the world and for Ruslana this also meant that the accounts of prayer, church room and believers were no longer singular but multiple. Thus, I believe it can be said that the Pussy Riot performance was a theopolitical action, adding to the mystery of things, 
There are many theopolitical activists in the world today though, and unlike the Pussy Riot or the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, many have done actual harm. Yet if reality is viewed as a surface of appearances, have we not lost the grounds for making distinctions between, say, a terrorist attack or the post-truth abusiveness of the current US president and the relatively harmless Pussy Riot performance in 2012? Does not a performative account of theology finally inactivate critique of any religious action? No, it doesn't actually. There is a crucial difference between the Pussy Riot and the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence and other more destructive forms of expression. The examples that I discuss in this book have one thing in common, and that is that they are not telling anyone it is the truth they are presenting. The Pussy Riot are also for co-readers, you see. Instead, they contribute to changing the way the world appears and thus changing political reality merely by adding images, thus twisting the way we perceive the world. So to end where we started, a theology of the mystery of things would have no higher authority to support itself on, not the one, not the sovereign, the only authority here is the mysteries of this life, the mystery of things. Yet out of a humility and respect for that mystery, the world of words, things, bodies and imagery, it would reject theopolitical actions that harm and oppress while claiming access to a higher and final truth. The theopolitical activism that I propose in this book then is one that uses creativity to encourage humility and the deepest respect towards the enigmatic multiplicity of life. Thank you.